crafty friends welcome to today's video today i've just been through my die collection and pulled out lots of outline dies and by that i mean dies that cut out the outlines rather than the shapes if you see what i mean so this is an outline of a rose and i've got all of these they're not all my dies that do outlines but they represent all my dies that do outlines and I've cut several of each in white cardstock and I'm going to make a bunch of cards for you using these but before I use these I'm going to create the mixed media type background that I'm going to put these on. I have here two pieces of mixed media paper I've taped them together on the back so that I can use them as one piece and I'm going to do some smushing but I'm going to do wet smushing and by that I mean I'm going to squirt water all over my paper and take a paintbrush and brush it around with more water to make it really wet because I want my smushing to be lovely and diffuse and I've got three Distress Oxide reinkers here dried marigold, abandoned coral and scattered straw and I'll give them a good shake before I use them to get everything mixed up and while this is still wet I'm just gonna drip on a few drops, not too many, of abandoned, oops, that was a bit of a squirt rather than a drip, and add my abandoned coral like this with my smusher. As I say, while it's still wet so that everything gets spread out and diffused rather than being defined blotches. I can always squirt on some more water if I want, and now I'm going to add some dried marigold. I'll try and plop it in the gaps. And again, I'll spread that out with my smisher. No need to clean it because it's going to pick up all the colours. Going to give it some more water again. And now for the scattered straw. I might bring in the abandoned coral again over here so I think we've lost some of the pink but that one looks all right okay I think I'm happy with that it's all fairly diffuse and now I've got some white pearl mixer cosmic shimmer pixie powder I'll pop a little bit on my mat and add some water to turn it into a, a paint and while this is still wet I'm going to spatter this on and this will create little areas of shimmer amongst the colour. I think I'll mix it with a bit of reinker because I put far too much on there. And I'll spatter that on and then I'll smush that onto another bit of card so I can use it later if I want to. Okay, right, I'm just going to tilt that a bit, encourage the colours and the shimmer and the shine to run about a bit. I can go in if there's any bits that need encouraging to move like that. Now I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer. If there are any puddles that you don't want you can pick them up with a bit of paper towel or just add a little bit more texture. So now this is dry, it's ready to cut up because I want to create some small panels that are going to fit exactly from top to bottom on my card blank. So I'm just going to draw a line there. And I want the panels to cover about, probably about that much of my card, which is about an inch and a half. So now I'll trim these to the right width. So from each A4 sheet, I've only cut up one for now, this is the other one, I've got eight of these strips and a few little bits left over. So I've chosen one of the strips and one of my outline die cuts. And I'm going to take some matte gel medium and sponge it onto the back of my die cut and place it on here like this. Thank you. 
I'll press it down with some non-stick deli paper and now take my scissors and snip off the overhang. And now I'll use tape runner to add this to a piece of black card and I'll trim it out so there's a strip of black down each side. And then this can go on here like this. It's ever slightly long. So I'll just trim the bottom off. And I've got this sentiment that says sending lots of love. I stamped this and cut it out a little while ago when I had a big old stamping session. I just want a sliver of card to place under the right hand side so that I can keep this level. I'll spread out some glue and I can dip that in there. And then dip this bit in here, stick it underneath. Add that on there and I just want to add something to the centre here of my flower and I'm going to use a big white nouveau drop. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular because it's a wonky flower. And there we have a finished card. I think you need to be mindful of the die cuts you're choosing to put on a specific length or width rather of a mixed media panel they still need to kind of make sense i think this one still looks like a flower even though i've chopped a lot of the petals off but if i was to say use this one on such a skinny strip it probably wouldn't read very well so i'm going to do another one with this one and use a slightly wider strip and i'm going to cut it from the other bit of paper mixed media paper that i haven't yet used. This time I'm going to stick this down onto this before I do the cutting. That way I'll know exactly what size piece to cut. I don't need it all on there so I can have some hanging off but I do want my deli paper to press that down. Again, I'm going to cut it to the full height of the card, which will be about here. And that's about seven centimetres. And now I'm going to give that a black outline again. Now, obviously, this is going to fill up a lot more of the card. So you might, when you've got a big die cut like this, want to go up to a bigger card blank this is just over four and just under six inches so a five by seven might be better now i've got a similar sentiment to the one i used last time it's a congratulations stands out nicely on there again i want a little bit of card underneath the end and this one hasn't got anywhere to put, say, a white nouveau drop centre. But I'm just going to add a few morning dew nouveau drops around the flower to give it a little bit of dimension, a bit of gloss. These will dry completely clear, but they may absorb some of the colour from the inks on the paper. But that will be fine because it will all work together nicely. So there we have a skinny one and a wider one. For this next card, I've decided to go square. So I've cut this three by three inch square and I've got these circular, whimsical circles, circular circles. And I thought I'd add these coming in from the different sides. Give that a good press down and trim off the overhang and then we'll see what we've got. Sometimes you can't really see a pattern properly until you uh, trim off the overhangs. I think I might add this other small one because I cut two of each of those. I often get asked how I clean glue off of my glass mat. If it's still wet I'll use a damp cloth or a baby wipe just to wipe it up. If it's dried I tend to give it a squirt with my mister and then I use this palette knife to 
scrape up the glue. The palette knife won't scratch my mat, it's toughened glass. So if you've got a proper glass craft mat, then you shouldn't scratch it using something like this. You could always use a plastic item, a gift card or a, what are those called? Store points card type things. So that's how I clean up my mat. And I don't wash this sponge dauber out. This sponge dauber is now mostly glue, but it works just as well as it did when I was washing it out after I'd used it every time. So uh, if I need to throw it away, I will, but it is serving me really well at the moment. So I'm going to give this a mat of black all the way around. So I've got my square. I'm going to add it to this square card. So this is five by five inches. I'm going to add this happy birthday sentiment, but I think this needs a bit more of a focal point. I don't think the circles are attention grabbing enough. So I have cut this leaf branch thing out of black glitter cardstock. And I think that works nicely there. So it's very bold. And with these dies, the circle dies, I like to add a little nouveau drop on the circles. Just adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of texture, a little bit of gloss. So there we have three cards made using these outline die die cuts. What I'm going to do now is make a bunch more with the remaining bits of mixed media and die cuts that I've cut and come back to you once they're all made and show you what we ended up with. Right, see you in a tick. So I'm back and these are the three cards that we made on camera. Just pop that onto one side and bring in the ones that are made off camera so you can compare. So for this one, I did another narrow strip and popped it over to the right hand side of the card instead of the left hand side. And I used, I think they're creative expressions almost doily dies and cut three and put them cascading down the sides of the panel. I used a small hollow sentiment so everything is kept within this strip and then to bring in a bit of bling on this one I added some gold glitter dots that I cut with one of my little circle dies. So this one is another big flower outline die. I think it's a magnolia and I went for a wide panel again because it's a big die cut. I added a friend's sentiment there and some rose gold foiled wonky circles that I cut with one of my wonky circle dies. And that's off to the left again just like this one and again if you wanted more white space you could put it on a bigger card base. Here we have a You're the Best card and I popped the strip in the middle and added three leaf outline die cuts and copper nouveau drops. I felt the copper went really well on the slightly darker background. It's very similar to this one. In fact, they probably came from next to each other from that first bit of paper that I cut up. But I do like the darker nouveau drops on this one. And now for a fabulous U card. This one I popped over to the right hand side and added two swirly circle star die cuts. I think that works with the sentiment. It's a kind of maybe a congratulations card, kind of a Eurus star type theme. And I added some white nouveau drops on the background itself. And some of them have absorbed some of the colour, but I think that works really well. They tone in really nicely with the background and they add a little bit of gloss and dimension. We've got another big one here on this Your Wonderful card. I popped it over to the right hand side because the flowers look as if they're opening towards the left. So they're looking up, they need a little bit of extra space on this side. So it made sense to pop that over there. 
The sentiments, all the sentiments on these cards have come from this stamp set, which is from Woodware. And on this one, I added Gold Nouveau Drops, again, for bling, dimension, gloss, and a bit of contrast. They're not quite as bold as the copper ones that I used, but they are dark enough to kind of stand out, and they draw your eye to this area here where the flower is. And here we have a thanks card. I did go to the left again just because I felt like it. I think that's my natural place to place things on the left hand side. Is that because I'm right handed? I don't know. Maybe it is. There's probably some kind of brain thing going on there. But anyway, these are some Tim Holtz swirly whirly die cuts that I put three on a bit like the creative expressions doily die. I do like that rule of three having three things bouncing down the panel. I added a thanks bang in the middle so it's restrained again in the middle and for contrast and to draw your eye to this area here I added these black Nouveau drops. I didn't do a particularly good job of that they're a bit splodgy but you know that's okay it's a handmade card. This is my penultimate card and I added three outline butterflies filled in a lot of the empty space with these mini enamel dots in pink and yellow so the pinks were from the bright set let me see if i can find them so there's this set of brighter colors and this set of more muted colors these are from violet studio i picked them up at hobbycraft i think uh, so i use the pinks because they went well with the pinks that are there and then I used the yellow. I felt the yellow on this would be a bit too bold because we've gone fairly pastel with these cards. But what I did do with these butterflies is I flooded them with crystal glaze. Once they were stuck down, I just got my crystal glaze out, filled in the wings and then drew with the glaze over all the white. So they're completely shiny and they are dimensional because the glaze has filled up the wells where the little holes are and I really like the way that has turned out. It makes the butterflies pop a little bit more, makes them look a little bit special. On this one I did do a double squirt of crystal glaze so I let it dry a bit and then I came in with another load of crystal glaze and it's actually really quite dimensional. These ones the crystal glaze has kind of shrunk in the wells and you can see the dip as it were. These ones look a little bit more stained glass and this one looks a bit more dimensional. And I added a Be Extraordinary, which I think goes well with the butterfly thing because butterflies are quite extraordinary. For ordinary things, they are quite extraordinary. So for my last card, I went with a heart theme. I chose a heartfelt sentiment and some heart outlines. I started with this one, adding just over half a heart coming in from the left. And that left me with one and a half hearts to play with. So I chopped those up and added them coming in from the top and the sides. It's a slightly wider band because I needed the heart to make sense. I added some white blizzard crystal no glitter drops from nouveau here to add some glittery drops and that was that one done so that's 11 cards made with outline dies i hope you've enjoyed the video and you've found at least one idea of something you can do with the outline dies in your stash maybe you've got some flowers or hearts or circles or butterflies and it's given you an idea of maybe how to use those if it has, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.